Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.24.2. In the previous episode, I sent a little lander over to the North Pole of the Moon, but there were a lot of communication problems. So the, the one thing I want to do in this episode, it'll be pretty simple, is just to get uh, two communication satellites, I'll say, uh, into orbit around the Moon. So that is my goal for this episode. Though, uh, if it ends up just being one the communication satellite around the moon, that'll at least be a, a, a big benefit compared to what we had before. Uh, so, yeah, that's the main thing. It shouldn't be uh, too difficult, uh, because we've already landed on the moon at the pole, so putting it into orbit shouldn't be a problem. But I also want to try out this RTG, and so I'm going to unlock it, and it will allow us to do future missions to more far-flung locations, in the solar system so I'm gonna research that and take a quick look at ah, we've got the standard hun multi hundred watt RTG up next so that'll be good uh, but we don't have the science for that so that's gonna be critical for a redo of my Jupiter mission and so we can try that out again and also probably for future Mars missions as well now I've got more than 250 uh, science left so let's see what else we can do with that these well the parachutes are really good but, but I think we've got quite a lot of real shoots already can't really get those docking ports rover wheels and bigger lander struts well that seems important doesn't it oh advanced probe tech more thruster blocks, more AIES parts that may or may not be useful. Procedural nose cone, that's something. Oh, and this seems to give us more antennae. And remote guidance units. You know, I think I'd like these remote guidance units, so I'm going to unlock this technology here. Okay, so here's what I've cooked up. We're once again launching out of Baikonur and using the Balder uh, launcher. And I'll just go from top to bottom. Here are our two sats. I chose not to use the bicoupler, the one that looks like... where are we? Oh, there we are. Uh, this one because this can't be uh, scaled up using tweak scale and the two satellite dishes were clipping. Uh, if you take a look at the satellites, these are actually large dishes meant for long-range communication with interplanetary missions, which will be helpful. We might as well have some of that uh, communication capability around the moon just in case the, Earth uh, the Earth's position isn't quite so good, um, you know, just as a redundancy. Uh, the, these whoop, these are the Earth-facing uh, satellite dishes. They will have enough range to constantly communicate with Earth. And then, of course, these will communicate with the other satellites in orbit around the Moon already. So these are two polar satellites. And you'll see I attempted a more unique, shall we say, cigar-shaped design or something like that. Uh, just, just as a change-up course and uh, actually uh, it's I forget if it's it's either this one I don't know which one is actually the parent uh, one of one of these is actually the original um, root part and I haven't actually filled up with anything I don't really need to though I think it'll be all right as is so um, I'm not gonna change anything about that they've already got enough uh, Delta V I think uh, oh except this one does not seem to Hmm. Sometimes. Anyway. Uh, well, heck. Uh, yeah, I guess we'll add some MHN tool 4 in there as well. Okay, so we'll fill it up like that. So uh, there, uh, the RCS blocks are using MHN tool 4. And so are the 1 kilonewton thrusters, the tiny little ones on the tails. And these will try and boost themselves into their final orbit, but they're not meant to make orbit around the moon. That will be the job of the second stage. So the second stage will not only transfer them, it will also make orbit around the moon this time. However, I, you know, I've been having trouble with the RD 
one four uh, one four uh, zero one four six. Sorry, this one. Uh, there's been some weird noise when it lights and some other glitching. So and that required me to cl uh, clear out last time. So just as a test, and this is not meant to be a final change by any means. Uh, it's just that I can I decide that since it was possible to switch out with the equivalent engine, the RL10. I've uh, put an RL10 B2 there, and so that has slightly more thrust. Uh, its ISP is uh, 462 compared to this one's, uh, not that one, 463, so reasonably close. And otherwise it definitely does have the vacuum a Delta V in order to handle this. Of course the payload is very light, so actually I don't know how the the payload capacity of this shapes out with the RL10 it's probably about the same and that's because even though the RL10 has a tiny bit less ISP it has also has a tiny bit less uh, mass okay so uh, that's that the rest of the stages are the same as we have seen there is bound to be a little bit of a stability issue as we've seen in previous flights but nothing that will be detrimental uh, hopefully. Uh, it, it is a point that we do have a lighter payload, so that's that's a thing. Though really, with with only the 4, uh, four Gs of thrust weight ratio here, and then a maximum of 5.4, I'm not too sure why we have the instability. Maybe I should add some sort of structure. Since this is a lighter flight, maybe I can add some... Let's, let's try out some aerodynamic strakes, for instance, on the boosters. Normally I'd want to put some other control surfaces here as well, but we'll just go with this for now and see how it works. Yeah, okay, uh, let, let's try this out. Lots could go wrong with this, that's that's the normal state of affairs. We'll see. Alright, let's uh, take it out to launch. Oh, uh, actually I wanted to show one other thing. You might have wondered why I didn't uh, use uh, the RTGs, right? We've got solar panels here, but I didn't even bother to put the RTGs. Why didn't I use the RTGs? Well, I can show you why. Uh, here's the Snap RTG, and you can see how big it is compared to everything else. And it's uh, radially mounted, so it'd have to look like that. Yeah, I think uh, I think we'll wait for a larger probe to use the RTGs. These these don't really require it. So yeah, that's why I didn't use the RTGs. All right, out to the launch pad. Okay, so I have minimized our inclination with the moon, though we'll still uh, use the same sort of trajectory that we did in the previous episode. Uh, it looks to be like very much noontime or late afternoon here at Baikonur, and we are ready for our launch. Um, lag seems tolerable, yeah. Okay, let's see now. All right, let's uh, light this thing and hope for the best. Uh, the significant changes in terms of the second stage and uh, and of course the lighter payload. We'll see how it works. Here we go. Still waiting for uh, tick. I should wait for first second. Come on, one second. Oh well. No, it's just waiting for me to release the clamps. Okay. Sometimes the clock starts when uh, when you light the engine. Sometimes they start when you release the clamps. It's tough to say, some I guess. Oh, uh, these uh, these engines don't. Uh, uh oh. Anyway, uh, these these engines don't produce electric charge. Oh, I, I was having trouble right clicking. I need to turn on the T tab for the center engine. I was having right-click problems in the VAV, though I think this time it was just a matter of accuracy and waiting for the clock. Okay. But everything else looks good. Very bright here. I wonder if this area actually looks like this. I've seen photos, I don't, but I haven't seen it in uh, very bright very bright conditions.
Okay, getting above the clouds. We are at 200 meters per second. Time is flowing quite nicely. Not, uh, not as quickly as would be preferred, but still uh, smooth, very smooth. Wow. Clouds for miles and miles here. No end to them. Having a white rocket is uh, practically camouflaged in this situation. Does that mean that the ground would have been even brighter were it not for the clouds? I don't know. I don't know if the environmental visual enhancement clouds actually cast shadows. I don't think so. Okay, I think I'm good to light the NK-43 now, but I'm going to throttle down and then light. I've got a little bit of wiggle, but everything looks quite stable. Still a lot of roll put, uh, I mean, roll is uh, going back and forth here, even though we've got the streaks on. The streaks are primarily meant to uh, prevent, you know, roll issues. They're obviously not meant for pitch or really, well, I mean, somewhat for yaw issues depending on your orientation, but mainly it's to uh, straighten out the roll, have the airflow sort of uh, push on the strakes to keep the roll stability there. It's not as bad as it's been, I guess, but I was hoping for a little bit more help. Okay, passing 4 G's here, but the boosters are now spent and booster set. Booster step is good, throttle is up. I thought I had made a sort of a roundish cone to sort of smooth this out. I wonder where that went. Huh. Yeah, I thought I had a sort of smooth cone tank to at the bottom of this. Why well, that isn't here anymore. Okay, well, uh, anyway, that's all right, and uh, we can uh, go for fairing separation, I think. And, yep. Okay, so that's still not fixed. That's great. Okay, uh, I think we can go to 32 on the pitch. Gotta extend the AIES antennas on the on the satellites. Uh, they're sort of sticking out there, you can see. And so that'll help us maintain communication here. We've still got signal to lay off. Not gonna make a big deal in this case. It's really only a big deal for landings. And uh, interplanetary journeys, of course. Still haven't added separation boosters to this stage, it looks like. Need to do that. No point not to, and of course uh, if you put them right here, they're actually technically aerodynamically shielded. Not that that matters, because we're going to use the Cepatrons, and the Cepatrons are apparently immune to Fermi Aerospace's aerodynamic failures. Okay, good for 30. The real trick now is whether the second stage is going to have that noise issue. If it still has a noise issue, obviously the problem is not the RD-0146 engine. And something else to do with the second stage that uh, causes that, and also other glitching. Um, but, 
But if uh, it turns out that we don't have that noise issue, it is that one engine. So we are going to narrow it down with this launch. Frankly, if it turns out just to be the, something to do with that engine and I can't figure out what exactly it is, I mean, I, uh, there's still a chance I can figure it out. But if I can't figure it out, uh, I'm, I think uh, just using the RL-10 is fair enough. Uh, we'll just sort of pretend at that point. Or I could configure another one of the engines to uh, make it uh, RD-0146. That's a possibility. There are some of the Bobcat engines that I don't actually... Well, I mean, they're, they're so well-crafted to look like the actual engines. It would be sort of a shame. Anyway, lots of possibilities, depending on what the issue is. The lighter payload is leading us to a somewhat higher orbit right now. That's not unexpected. The NK-43 does have relights, though I don't see any particular reason why we would want to have it start our TLI, so probably not going to use it for that anyway. Okay, we're getting high on the G-forces. Let's throttle down here. And we should pay attention to where we're ending up. Okay, uh, 258 by 242. All right. Okay, so let's plot for translunar injection. Okay, so uh, we want these these satellites to be in in relatively high orbit and this current trajectory gets us to uh, 3883 kilometers which is which is a reasonable amount I think so interesting trajectory of course uh, going around that way taking about 11 days 10 to 11 days to get there and that's that's quite a long pass actually uh, it's actually extending way beyond like that but a very moderate amount of delta v necessary not much more than the normal normal uh, burn would take for tli so and uh, of course we're burning out of the ascending node reaching relatively close to our descending node and so that's the plan i've uh, wiped out some of the some of the um, inclination difference but not all of it just like i did with the previous launch so here we go Okay, I'm going to use RCS to push forward. And, well, we haven't lit it yet, so I'll only uh, call it definitive once we have it lit. Okay, so let's uh, just uh, time warp to the maneuver node and then see what's up. Okay, let me check the stage time. It's like about 12 minutes, so we should probably begin soon. Let us, uh, well, let me just have Smart ASS turn to the maneuver node. It's going to use the tiny bit of reaction control power from the two satellites. They both have small reaction wheels to them. But perhaps I'll just uh, give it a little burst of RCS to help. That's our situation. Very unstable, as, as predictable. So I'm going to have that go first. Those are the two Ullage rockets. Could use the RCS system to do the Ullage, but we've got these Ullage rockets anyway, so we might as well. Didn't do that in the previous episode, but seems a waste otherwise. Before I forget, I'm going to uh, extend the sort of ventral solar panels. Now these are actually scaled up. I used Tweak Scale to scale them up to 140. Uh, 140%. So they're a little bit larger than the usual. I just realized that I could do that. Couldn't uh, tweak scale the bicoupler though, so that's why I couldn't use that. But the solar panels can be tweak scaled, so benefit from that. Okay. Oh, it's very stable now. I'll still use the Elridge rocket just to be sure. 
Okay, here we go. Hope that maneuver node's okay. Here we go. Okay. Okay, bit of stability issue, but it looks to be alright. No audio issue. So, uh, well, whoever knows anything about the RD. 0146 uh, that that needs to be fixed now I noticed that our periapsis is going down I hope that's not uh, gonna hit anything too low obviously it's only because we're burning so far ahead of the maneuver node that it's dipping at all gotta keep an eye on that okay so coming on the end of this burn I've activated the two antennas that are supposed to communicate with Earth from the moon. And so those are both going. So far, uh, flight computer has not interfered with anything. Once it starts doing that, I'm going to have to quit out and then come back in in order to cancel that out. We uh, look to be going pretty well here. Our off-plane transfer should uh, be on target right now. No throttling on this engine. Uh, I don't think there was throttling on the RD-0146 either, so we're just going to have to fine-tune it using the RCS. No roll issues after the initial start of this burn. Ah. I forgot that uh, it uh, trails off. I should have shut it off a little bit earlier. Okay, uh, let's see where we are. Way off, of course. Now, uh, I guess we'll use RCS to uh, fix that. Getting in close first and then boosting out is preferable, so I'm just going to go to there. That's That seems reasonable. Okay. Uh, not very polar it looks like. We'll have to uh, change that up as we approach. Maybe it's polar. Can't really see from this angle. Uh, no, it looks just slightly inclined. Alright, anyway, uh, let's get out there. Okay, so departing Earth Sphere of Influence. All communications should be set up fine. Our electric charge is well, well received here. There's the Mediterranean, Northern Africa, Middle East. That seems like some serious storm systems there, but anyway. Yeah, it occurs to me that actually our apoapsis will be beyond the range of the antennas we've got now, but there's a multiplier effect, so we'll see how that works out. Once we come back in, we'll be in range. Though there has to be something around Earth that is also in range, so that's a little bit of a trick. Though we've got control stations all over the planet now, so I'm not even sure why there should be anything any loss of connection at all. We've got a hydrogen boil off here so we'll have a slightly less delta V than when we departed Earth. Seems like I need at least one more Earth satellite. You know what? Actually uh, once I get connection back I'll just uh, tell it to communicate with well, geosync sat might not be... Well, it should be facing the moon right now. But it might not be in the future. Hmm. Bit of a conundrum. The angle should be fine. I think we're just too far out. Okay, Mooner Sphere of Influence. Yeah, only mildly tilted. We need to fix this. 
Okay, no avoiding it. It's a pretty serious burn, 135. Let's see what kind of delta V we have left. We got like 3,000 almost. Though the thrust weight ratio seems to be completely wrong. We've got uh, 10 tons. Thrust rate ratio should be... Oh, it's, is it measuring it from the moon's perspective? I think this is from the moon's perspective. Because otherwise this should be around 1 right now, not, uh, not all this. Huh. Didn't realize it did that. That's confusing. I would just prefer it to be weight on Earth rather than weight around whatever body we happen to be. We've lost connection. Well... Well, hopefully just a little bit of time will fix that. So it seems like we need to launch another Earth satellite. Maybe another geosync. Uh, it beats me. Uh, let's see. What's our... Well, you can see our sort of cone angle towards the Earth. And... Just seems to be a little bit off. Here's geosync trying to right click so far no other bugs right click bug plenty but uh, replacing the RD0146 with the RL10 seems to have worked for everything else so far okay uh, very stable okay let's uh, light it a little bit of wiggle actually it doesn't throttle so it doesn't really matter what my setting is. Let's uh, not have a lot of deviation. Let's just keep it there. Our inclination is 80 degrees. Hmm. I think that's close enough, honestly. Don't need to be too picky about it. Let's try and get the apoapsis to about, uh, say, 6 will be good. I'm just doing it arbitrarily, honestly. I mean, as long as it's within the range of the AIES antennae, it should be okay. And that will be well within the range. Uh... Maybe five will be safer. Okay, right around here we'll do. Okay, I'm gonna light the other rockets and then light the main engine. How is our main engine doing? Still says very stable, but I'll still use the other rockets this time. It's the other rockets that produce the spin. It's interesting. Okay, there we go. And it looks like our orbital period is uh, 9 hours and 37 minutes. Hmm. And what would it be when we boost out from uh, apoapsis to create a circular aura? No, that's not what I wanted. Let's get rid of this. So if we circularize at this altitude, we can get a 12 hour orbit. So let's aim for a 12 hour orbit. Okay, so uh, we'll, we'll just carry everything together to apoapsis right now and then we'll have one of them uh, separate go into a 12 hour orbit and then the next one separate so here's a fact uh, we're approaching apoapsis but we have no connection <laughs> uh huh all 
and it's not that uh, it's just us. Uh, nothing has a connection back to Earth. And it beats me why. Um, let's see, let me check out GeosyncSat for a sec. Okay, GeosyncSat, what are you doing? You're supposed to be pointing at the moon. You seem to say so. You yourself are connected. You have plenty of electric charge. You point it at the moon. Huh. You have line of sight with the moon. You seem to have a very narrow cone angle though. It's not very useful. Yeah, why do you have such a narrow cone angle? Okay, now I can't right click on you. Okay, uh, hmm. Wish we could see the cone angle on here. Should just put another one of these, honestly. Well, we can't mess with that now. I suppose we could switch the two. But then I'd have to pick which mission control it should link to, and that's troublesome. Now that we've got all of these. Okay, so we're going to have to put a different uh, Geosync sat up later. Let me go back to the tracking station and switch back to the other mission. Okay, so we'll just, uh, we are just going to have to wait until we've got connection. Even though we're past our apoapsis now. Okay, now we're connected. Let's get on with it. So, uh, I'm going to decouple the, that one. Off it goes. It's got the same communication capability as, capability as everything else. I'm going to extend the rest of its solar panels. Just in case. This goes to active vessel. And I'm going to activate it. We will have enough electric charge. Very good. Throw this down. I activate that engine. And we are pointing prograde so we can just burn. And I'm just going to wait until my orbital period is 12 hours. So I'll be back when that happens. Okay, here we go. Coming up on 12 hours. Doesn't need to be precise, but it'll help. Okay, well, let's just uh, get it there. Uh, RCS thruster on. Uh, the RCS is too powerful. Um, yeah, the RCS is not going to be able to fine-tune this thing. And for some reason, now uh, Flight Computer is not interfering. I don't know. I don't know what to make of this. Okay, so I did not update anything, by the way, as far as uh, Remote Tech is concerned. The only change I've made is which engine I was using in the second stage. Okay, uh, can we go back? No. Okay. We're not too far away, but let's go there. Okay, here we are again. And now we have to wait as that other satellite makes a few orbits. And we make a few orbits and therefore go out of sync with it. And so we're going to be two and a half hours off on the first one and then we're going to be five hours off on the second one so we're not going to be completely on opposite sides of the moon but we're going to be somewhat obliquely on opposite sides so making a fortunate triangle with those yeah, we, we sort of make a sort of pyramid shape Kind of. If you look at it from the right angle. <laughs> Alright. Uh, I don't need this here. Okay, we're still connected. Time to apoapsis is two minutes. Well, uh, yeah, I, uh, this, this stage is just going to be dumped, unfortunately, even though it's got some spare juice in it. But we have nothing left to do with it. You know, we could just send two of these into Geosync as well. They seem like pretty good sturdy satellites, don't they? 
Uh, I don't even know exactly what their what their oral period is. It's around 0 0.5 to 0 0.6, it looks like. No, it, it's 0.7 sometimes. Let me go to the other one and see if we can get it close to that. Okay, I'm, I'm trying to see if I can very gingerly increase the throttle, but it didn't quite work out. Ugh. And... Uh, okay, well, okay. That, okay, that looks as close as I'm going to get it. Uh, so 12 hours, 0.7 seconds. And the other one is within 0.2 seconds of that. Okay, so that's what we have. They're not on opposite sides, but that's good because they, they can talk to each other then. It does give us somewhat of a blind spot on this side. But uh, that's much better than we had before. The moon seems pretty well covered. It's actually Earth that isn't. Uh, Earth is covered with a lot of mission control centers, but not enough satellites, it looks like. So we're going to have to do something about that, put something else in geosync. It might be these two, uh, two similar satellites to these, or it might be something completely different. I'd prefer something completely different because I just like to change things up. But we'll have to take a look at it. Uh, with uh, two satellites in orbit around the moon, I'll look into first uh, getting something in geosync next time, and also next time I'll start out uh, talking about the next Jupiter mission. Alright, so uh, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.